Welcome to Kitchen Spaces, the show that's all about you and your kitchen. I'm Andy Tillis. And I'm Jody Dombrowski. There's a lot of cooking happening on today's show with all kinds of meal ideas. Some of it so simple and scrumptious, well, you'll just have to hang out with us to find out yourself. That's right, Jody. We're spending a lot of time in the kitchen, teaming up with some true culinary experts. Plus, we get to see some flatware like you've never seen before. Definitely worth checking out. So stick around and see it all right here on Kitchen Spaces. scrumptious meal ideas. It never stops here at Kitchen Spaces. Now what goes great with every sandwich we just saw? Here's a hint. It's America's favorite snack food. Hmm, potato chips? Yep. Today we tip our hat to the potato chip. Here's Ava Leong in the kitchen. In 1853 in Saratoga, New York, Native American cook George Crumb sliced his usual french fries extra thin and then overcooked them until they were crispy. He served them to a picky patron in the restaurant that hated thick fries, and they were a hit with everyone. What George Crum had just accomplished was the invention of one of America's favorite snacks and side dish, the potato chip. Our crew went to Hyannis, Massachusetts, the home of Cape Cod Potato Chip Factory, to help us expand our appreciation of the little salty wafers. Enjoy the tour. <laughs> This general area out here is where we receive both potatoes and oil. And we're crewed to do that around the clock to support our operation, whether we're running five days or six days. What you see behind you is a very traditional piece of farm equipment called a Sputnik unloader. This is the room where we house the majority of the oil that we run and the potatoes that we store. Potatoes don't come in here until they've made their way through the lab and the technicians say that they meet our specifications. There's three oil tanks behind me where the canola oil stays and right over to my right is five storage bins where we house the potatoes. What you're looking at right now is an individual batch of potatoes that's being introduced into the Urschel head. The Urschel head's gonna slice the potatoes, deposit them on the infeed belt, and they'll make their way into the kettle at that point. And right over here, the slicer head feeds two different kettles. At that point, we put a batch into the kettle, and for a prescribed period of time, the chips remain in that kettle, and then the computer allows them to come out as a finished batch. Products distributed to any one of our six packaging machines by this FMC distribution system. This is state-of-the-art technology and it's designed to very gently take the product exactly where you want it so it's where it's supposed to be. From the distribution system, we then send the product into our seasoning tumblers and eventually the product will find its way down into these scale heads. We're in the packaging department now. This is directly where the product comes after it's been made in the kitchen. The product then goes down a distribution system that's designed to take the product to any of the packaging machines that we need it to go to. At that point, it goes through scales and baggers and, and eventually makes its way into automatic case packers right behind me. Wow. For a chip fanatic like me, it's interesting to see how potato chips are made today. To give us some tips on how to incorporate potato chips into our regular meals, we brought Chef Michael McDermott into our kitchen studio. <laughs> Thanks Hi. for being here. Hi, Eva. Nice to see you. You too. Uh, well, I see you brought a number of varieties, and we've matched them up with some sandwiches and other tasty meal items. What have we got here? Well, I'll tell you, we have some great stuff here today for you. What I really want to do is open people's minds to the creative use of the different potato chip flavors. Potato chips are the great American side. Uh -huh. They're perfect for picnics, parties. Everyone loves them, oh, yeah. adults, 
kids. <laughs> and today we have just a few suggestions of pairing flavors that work together. Oh. So let's go through them together. Eh? All right, let's pair. We have, <laughs> hey, we have focaccia, okay. chicken focaccia with some nice lettuce, crisp lettuce, beautiful oh. focaccia. Yeah. But paired with it is the fantastic classic potato chip. Mm. Next we're going to move on to we have blackened tuna. Oh, uh, wow. It's phenomenal. We have yeah. a little bagel, bagel bread that it's on. But okay. what's great about this, the blackening goes is pairs really well with the sea salt and cracked pepper potato chip. Next, we have Chinese chicken salad. Mm -hmm. Lots of vegetables, mm -hmm. a little uh, on the flat side. Yeah. But then we have honey Dijon potato chips to really bring the flavor of that salad and that chicken out. Fantastic combination. This one was the most flavorful one when I tried it earlier in the uh, in the other room. This one just was bursting. It jumps flavor. right it really out. Really did, at you. yeah. That one stood out. And because out. the chips are kettle cooked, okay, the sugar caramelizes in the chips themselves and really brings out that flavor that's put on it with this is the honey Dijon in this case. Yeah. Then we're going to go to something with a little more bite to it. Mm -hmm. These are chicken tacos, okay? Mexican flavor, and we paired that with just a hint of jalapeno uh -huh. and some aged cheddar. That one's the kick one. I remember that one really <laughs> gave I'll me a good I'll tell you what, it yeah. really wakes you up. Uh -huh. And it really is wonderful with the tacos and stands up against those strong Mexican flavors. Perfect. Yeah. Next we have grilled veggie pitas. Oh, okay. Now, the thing that's so significant about these chips, you got 40% less fat, mm -hmm. but they still have that great taste and legendary crunch uh -huh. of Cape Cod potato chips. Uh -huh. One of my favorites here is mm. we were talking about that natural caramelization from the kettle cooking process, small uh -huh. batches. As you can see, we've got the natural sugars are all nicely caramelized uh -huh. in these robust, russet potato chips. Yeah, this one almost had that smoked flavor come out. That was my favorite, I oh, think, out of all the dishes. And that it's was, phenomenal yeah. because it's standing right against this uh -huh. bacon sirloin burger, which is beautiful, but those chips really complement it mm. very well. Perfect. Well, I mean, it looks like we have something for everyone here. Definitely, because I know when friends come over at parties, people are picky about what they have, but now I can explain to them how to pair this with that flavor to balance out the different uh, the different notes or whatnot. So, so that, that something be interesting. for everyone, like yeah. the notes in a song. Yeah, yeah. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank well, we you. I appreciate that. Well, <laughs> the common potato chip really isn't so ordinary when you pay attention to choosing a quality chip with loads of flavor. So you can use it as a snack, a side dish, or just party nibbles. It can be dressed up with lots of places to go, essentially. It's a true multitasker. I wonder what George Crumb would have thought of today. <laughs> in the kitchen, I'm Eva Leung for Kitchen Spaces. At this point, everyone watching the show must be hungry. We've had some great recipes. But we're just about out of time. Folks watching the show will want to get the exact details of how our chef prepared so many excellent dishes. So they should visit our website to get the recipes and find out more. Thanks for joining us today on Kitchen Spaces. I'm Andy Tillis. And I'm Jody Dombrowski. We'll see you next time. For more information about anything you've seen on today's show, or to find out how to be part of the show, Log on to kitchenspaces.tv.